Recording. Okay, so uh, Zhezhi, uh, do you want to just tell the audience uh, your name, uh, your group and where you're from? Uh, yes, uh, I'm Jerzy Miklaszewski, I'm from uh, Krakow uh, and I'm from the Sync Fencing team, uh, which, is, um, which is a school in Krakow as well. So, what I'm teaching and I'm showing, to the, the, showing today is the Polish Sabre, which is a specialty for my school. Cool, so um, so there's been, um, I know on my YouTube channel there's been a lot of questions about Polish labour. It's uh, something in HEMA that's uh, a lot of interest has grown in the last, particularly in the last couple of years that I've seen. Um, a lot of people uh, in America and in the UK as well, and of course in Poland, have been delving into the, the sources that are available to reconstruct uh, Polish, uh, Polish um, sabre use, shabla. Um, and so which sources do you work from and ha what challenges do you face in trying to reconstruct? The challenge is uh, lack of sources, actually. Okay. The point is, uh, you can use the drawing, the depictions, you can use the memoirs, uh, you can use uh, the Western treaties, but the problem is, uh, there is we are not sure if they are um, really, really uh, depicting and telling about if that is the weapon, or if it is like something else influenced weapon. The point is, uh, of, my, um, of my research was, uh, I started with redefining the weapon. So, uh, I started uh, thinking about what is a shabla. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm using the uh, word shabla on purpose instead of saber because I think it's a little bit different weapon than, for example, the British dueling sword or dueling saber. Uh, than, and than, uh, for example, a katana, which is often uh, told as a shabla in Poland. Uh, and what I think. It, they are not uh, a shabla. Uh, Polish shabla uh, specifically um, defines the weapon uh, with which uh, is a mounted type of weapon, which is called battle. And he, from with that weapon, you are willing to um, fight with money opponent because you are cavalry. Often there is lots of infantry, or you are striking the very fast movement going forward backward in different way. So the point is I started thinking what is a shabla? Uh, there is I will go with uh, I will publish uh, one uh, a small brochure about my research uh, in a few months maybe. Uh, there will be like more focused uh, more specific things about that. But what I'm thinking about mostly is when I think about shabla, this is a training weapon actually, padded for training weapon. When I'm thinking about the point of balance, very little hand protection and the uh, curvature that is uh, specific for, and that is necessary, uh, here, hues. Why hues? Because when I'm striking the saw, I'm trying to hit, for example, someone, my um, sword uh, goes into someone or something and it, it, I cannot retract it, I cannot take it off. See, the saber allows me, the curvature allows me for a long strike where it won't uh, be stuck into someone and it will still strike. And there are a few things about that which is very, very necessary. Uh, here, the point of balance, for example. I cannot stop my weapon from moving, that's very important. Uh, I cannot uh, simply uh, allow my, so uh, my weapon to go too much forward without losing my grip. So there are additional ways of gripping that, which is it's not possible when you have a full hand protection. You don't have uh, the possibility to actually uh, grip a shabla properly uh, when you are willing to um, bring the fence like a dueling saber. Because there is too high for the balance to lead to protection, hand protection. And as well, curvature doesn't fit for simple hitting. So the, the the simple hilt of the of the shabla. I mean, I know usually they either have a just a cross guard. Sometimes they have a thumb ring, don't they? And sometimes just a simple knuckle bow. Uh, 
does that affect the style of fighting in terms of protecting the hand? So, for example, in the starting position, maybe more like medieval um, fencing, where you're trying to keep the hand away from the opponent. I think so. I think so. In some ways, the uh, the weapon is uh, the hand. For example, the weapons, the early weapons, like the, like. Um, or Mesa, yeah. uh, yeah. yes, yeah. little protection, yeah. and uh, there's little from uh, knuckle guard. Okay. Uh, so when the, all the strikes are very retracted, you're willing to deliver a strong blows, even though your weapon is very light and uh, small. Yeah. But you are protecting your hands. That's the point. I just want to say, by the way, for the viewers, apologies for the background noise, but this is in the kitchen of, uh, of my club, and there's lots of sparring going on that side, so we'll, we'll try to speak up and hope you can hear. Um, I also have another question. I've heard uh, or seen on the internet a lot of people refer to Polish uh, shabla uh, fighting as, as um, uh, the cross-cutting art as if it was referred to as the cross-cutting art. Can you tell me anything about that? Cross-cutting art? Is a, this is, uh, there are a few uh, sources uh, telling about the cross-cutting art. Uh, there is a gigante, there is a, a, there is a memoir, memoirs, uh, there is the Kitovic memoirs. Uh, this, what we think it is about, is about delivering blows on the um, so-called cross. The yeah. diagonal the lines. Diagonal, yeah, yeah, diagonal lines. The point is probably about that when you sit in a hole, you don't want to cut it here, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's why when you stood uh, on the ground, yeah. you just attack, use the same weapon, which was the yeah. vice to be on the horse, yeah. on the ground. Yeah. Well, I mean, one thing that, looking at the reconstructions that I've seen um, online and, and in person of uh, Polish shabla use, the thing that comes to my mind is also that, uh, that some of the defences are cutting into a cut, which that could be the cross-cutting art as well. So if someone's cutting at you, you cut into the flat of their blade, like a, like a Zornhau in Longsword. Uh, and you get these things in Mesa as well. Um, whereas in uh, France and England and so on, uh, and perhaps Spain as well, that you, you, and Italy, you've got more of a parry riposte system. So perhaps, in my mind, the, the, the cross-cutting art could almost mean like the counter-cutting art of cutting into cuts rather than parry and repost like we do in, in exactly. British systems. Exactly, I, I, I showed it on, the, yeah. on this few uh, exercises yeah. we did on the lesson just before now. Yeah. It's the same, see, the, the, way, the way you think defines the uh, way you uh, define the weapon. Yeah. Uh, so that, 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 that's about, all about this uh, research. Yeah. Thing. And so my, my final question is, in, um, in sort of Western European sabre fencing, you uh, lunge with every attack. And you, um, essentially it's a parry and riposte system and attacks are given on the lunge. In Polish uh, Shabla, how do you think that you advance to make an attack? Is there passing footwork or gathering footwork or lunges? Or... The point is, uh... This, uh, the, the problem about Poland uh, as a country where uh, like a connection of east and west. Yeah. So essentially, I'm not telling that we didn't lunge uh, or we yeah. did only passive steps. I think we did all of them because, for example, aristocracy, uh, Polish aristocracy, sends most, mostly their sons to the Western uh, universities. And they were schooled both in rapier, later in small sword, but still doing the shabla uh, in their own way. So they probably adapted both aspects. Yeah. But what, from what I say on the Western sources depicting the shabla system, like for example, Sebastian Hessel, which we uh, could see. The so is that Hessler? Hessler. Hessler. Yeah. Okay. And when, do you know when, when that is from? Uh, that is uh, from the 17th century. Okay. So this is a German German 17th century source that yes. talks about. Yes, so very late 17th century. Okay. He, he, uh, his um, works were after, from after the uh, Vienna uh, okay. battle. Uh, the siege of the, 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 the point, he, 
he shows us that we are not essentially using uh, the lunges, but instead we are adapting to your, our position, to our enemy. But we can still lunge, it's a very useful uh, technique. Probably we use that, but there's no, nothing to say for sure. Yeah. Okay, well, um, I'm going to end it there because we've been talking for quite a long time now and I want to give you a break. Um, but thank you very much for coming and showing us some uh, Polish Shabla. Uh, hopefully we'll see some more in the future. And again, I apologise for the sound quality to the viewers, uh, but we do our best. Thank you.